Yes, and here are three things you need to know right now. We have core PCE numbers for the month of April with a year-over-year -year increase of 6.3% and a core PCE increase of 4.9%. Here to discuss those numbers is Yahoo Finance's Brian Chung. Brian, a little bit of ho-hum here, but uh, markets seem to be running with it at least a little bit so far. Yeah, at least for right now. I mean, look, at the end of the day, Americans and market watchers alike just care about whether or not inflationary pressures are going to abate. And when you look at it again on a year over year basis on a headline number, it was indeed a slower pace of price increases in the month of April than in the month of March. And that's because it clocked in at 6.3%. Uh, again, the street was actually estimating about 6.2%. So essentially in line, but again, a little bit of a slowdown from the 6.6% pace that we had seen in March. But look, that's still a positive number. It's still a relatively large number above where the Fed would like to see it at 2%. But I'm also looking at a number of other things inside the report because, again, we want to see signs of whether or not other types of price pressures are slowing. And one thing that I was watching was in addition to um, just a headline number, you look at spending and also income, personal spending clocking in on a month over month basis at 0.9% between March and April and personal income at 0.4% on a month over month basis. But also take a look at the personal saving rate. Very interesting kind of bit of this report. It showed 4.4% in terms of saving as a percentage of disposable personal income in the month of April. By the way, that is the lowest rate of saving that we have seen since 2008. Now, on the surface, just because it's a low rate number doesn't necessarily mean people are saving less because a lot of stimulus happened, right? So you can save a, a smaller percentage, but if you also had more income coming in, your total savings is going to be higher. But at the same time, you wonder if there's a psychological effect of people looking at how much they're saving, which is a lot smaller now than it was about a year ago, and saying, well, is this the time for me to perhaps stop consuming, stop spending just, so just much? Be, so just one quick precision here. When yeah. we're talking about the savings rate for April, that was right. the percentage of income saved in that month, correct? Correct. So in other words, it also doesn't account for all of the money that people could have saved and not spent yet, right? Exactly. Okay. But again, I think the point here is, I mean, you may, it's a very salient point that the level of saving, which is different than the rate itself, is still extremely elevated. But you wonder if there's a psychological effect of sure. people noticing, well, actually, my paycheck, which in many cases, the wage gains are now not outpacing the amount of uh, inflation that they're experiencing at the stores. They're now saying, well, you know, maybe it's time for me to start cutting back which will have at some point the effect of what the Fed's trying to do, which is try to tamp down that demand that's been driving a lot of price increases by America's producers. Yeah, and there's the so-called wealth effect too, right? Where people yes. are seeing their portfolios go down and that's also affecting yes. spending patterns. Now, PCE does not have the breakdown by stuff, right? In terms of- Not like CPI does. Not, right. not like the CPI. Report, yeah. And we were talking in the break and about the implications for the Federal Reserve and you said, even if it did have that breakdown, the Fed's really focused on this core big number. They're not as much focused on the individual components. Yeah, well, what's interesting is that we, we normally hear the Fed as a talking point, make a distinction between or headline PCE, which is their preferred measure of inflation, and then core PCE. Again, core strips out the volatile food uh, and energy prices. So it clocked in at 4.9% on a year-over-year -year basis in the month of April. But you haven't heard the Fed make that distinction as of the last year or so, right? They're not saying, oh, well, if you read the core readings, it's actually lower than that. I mean, overall, the headline number and the real experience lived, uh, you know, kind of observations that Americans are making at the store, they're not making that distinction. It's, it's eggs are going right, up by right, 10%. Right. So Jay Powell said literally a few weeks ago, well, look, everybody reads the inflation reports. We all know that. But he said, quote, truthfully, this is not a time for tremendously nuanced readings of inflation. That is a way to neutralize any sort of nuanced or very, very kind of myopic readings of these inflation reports. Either way you cut it or slice it, this April reading likely doesn't change the Federal Reserve's stance, which is we're going to continue to raise interest rates. You know, I think for years, if not decades, everyone or market participants, economists have hung on every single word that the Fed says that we're looking for nuance because Jay Powell has said, and everybody else is saying, we're going to hike 50 basis points. We're engaging in QT. And people are thinking, well, is he going to blink? And market participants, I think we're not prepared for the fact mm. that the Fed is resolved. Um, and I think that's what you're trying to hammer home here. Yeah, well, when it comes to just the path that the Fed laid out, keep in mind that Jay Powell and the minutes that we got from the last meeting, the first week of May, again, we got the minutes of that just two days ago, it reinforces that there is a coalescence among the Fed policymakers for 250 basis points moves in their next two meetings. That's in mid-June and then late July. 
the Fed made that messaging three weeks ago. So they yes. essentially locked themselves into this policy move and policy stance. We've heard all the other Fed officials that have spoken since then basically say they're in line with that policy. So from that standpoint, the Fed is very clear on saying this is what we're going to do in the future. And whether or not inflation came in today on a headline basis at 6.3% on a year over year basis or 6.5% or 6.6%, it was going to be the same story either way. Mm -hmm. To echo the guy here in New York City, the inflation is too damn high. Whatever you want to say. Everything's you know, too the high. You exactly. know, the rent yeah. is too and, damn high, And you damn have to hit the desk, as you say. Yes, of course. That's, yeah. Maybe yeah. that's what Jay Powell should do at the next press, press conference. He's, he's a pretty cool customer. He needs a gavel at the to, podium. It's hard to see him doing that. <laughs> Why not? No, no, not to rein in the reporters, you know? What? I don't no? Want, no, no, one that, chains, no one chains this guy. Okay. All right. <laughs> All right. <laughs> Thanks so much, Brian.